Now at five, Wisconsin on guard. The governor orders National Guard troops to be ready for election day. What it means for our state. Plus, you can officially get a ride on the hop. The business hoping to get a boom from the new ride. And when could we see more rain in the forecast? That's all ahead on Live at Daybreak. Right now, from Milwaukee, this is today's TMJ4 Live at Daybreak. Good morning to you this Saturday, November. I'm Kelly Lederman, and I'm meteorologist Alyssa Wilson. Governor Scott Walker has authorized National Guard cybersecurity team to be ready for election day. It's a first for Wisconsin. The National Guard cybersecurity team was formed in 2016. The state says in order to be triggered by a specific threat, but rather the order is proactive in making sure if the National Guard was needed, they could respond quickly and efficiently. The teams are made up of IT professionals who are subject matter experts who would be prepared to provide uh, assistance to, to officials if requested. The State Elections Commission says that assistance could be anything from stopping hackers getting into a county clerk's website or helping if a natural disaster hits near a polling place. Just three days until the election and candidates are getting in last minute campaigning. Yesterday, Democratic Massachusetts Senator and possibly 2020 presidential candidate Elizabeth joined Senator Tammy Baldwin ra rallying voters in Milwaukee and Madison. Baldwin's challenger, Republican Leah Vukmir, was also campaigning around the state. Vukmir once again bought up a health care and an event in Dodgeville, and specifically the back and forth over coverage for pre existing conditions. Early voting locations in Milwaukee will wrap up things this weekend for people looking for a head to start on Election Day. We caught up with people yesterday and made their way to polling sites. In Milwaukee, early voting numbers have surpassed 26,000. That number is up from 2014 when over 15,000 residents voted early. At Mitchell Street Library, workers cheered and celebrated as new voters cast their ballots. 19-year-old Roberto Munez says he feels proud to vote. It felt nice because, like, I'm actually contributing to like society and stuff like that. In person, early voting is available in some parts of the state, though tomorrow, but those voters must have registered by yesterday in order to do so. Find your polling place and see what's on your ballot before you head to the polls at tmj4.com slash the vote. The hop is officially open. Yesterday, city leaders cut through a ribbon of literal hop, welcoming Milwaukee's new streetcar system to the downtown area. Dozens of people piled on board for the first trip on board. This year is the first year is free of a ride. Streetcars used to be a way of life in Milwaukee. In fact, at one time, they were the way to get around. It all started in 1860. The first streetcars were horse drawn from the 1800s. They rolled down the old Grand Avenue, which is now Wisconsin Avenue. Streetcars converted to electricity in 1980, and by the 1940s, streetcars were rolling down town movie theaters. The last streetcar ran in March 1958. Trackless operations were discontinued. In 1960, in favor of diesel buses, which were cheaper. There will be a hot party going on all weekend long. To see a photo gallery of opening day, a list of weekend events, and the map of the route, look for this story on the homepage.tmj4.com. A delayed downtown development is now moving forward. The culture, which will go in the empty space across the streets from Discovery World, has now federal financing. Mayor Tom Barrett says the hop is just part of the renaissance that downtown is experiencing right now. The Pfizer Forum also recently opened its entertainment district will soon follow. The Milwaukee Business Journal says it's the highest level of investment they have seen in a downtown area of recent memory. And the new culture will serve more than just those in its building. It will also have a two-store grocery store. There's going to be public rooftop spaces, sort of green spaces, but also there will be a transit station on its first level that will have stops for both the streetcar and the bus rapid transit system that Milwaukee County plans to build. No word yet on when the counter is going to open. The hop is expected to expand to the lakefront by 2020. Coming up on Live at Daybreak, a gunman opens fire inside a yoga studio. 
Now police are searching for a motive. Now at 5, Wisconsin on guard. The governor orders National Guard troops to be ready for Election Day. What it means for our state. Plus, you can officially get a ride on The Hop, the business hoping to get a boom from the new ride. And when we can see more rain in the forecast, that's all ahead on Live at Daybreak. Right now, from Milwaukee, this is today's TMJ4 Live at Daybreak. Good morning to you on this Saturday, November 3rd. I'm Kelly Lederman and I'm meteorologist Alyssa Wilson. Governor Scott Walker has authorized National Guard's cybersecurity team to be ready for Election Day. It's a first for Wisconsin. The National Guard cybersecurity team was formed in 2016. The state says it is not triggered by a specific threat, but rather the order is proactive in making sure if the National Guard was needed, they could respond quickly and efficiently. The teams are made up of IT professionals who are subject matter experts who would be prepared to provide uh, assistance to, to officials if requested. Elections Commission says that assistance could be anything from stopping hackers getting into a county's clerk website or helping if a natural disaster hits near a polling place. Just three days until the election and candidates are getting in last minute campaigning. Yesterday, Democratic Massachusetts Senator and possible 2020 presidential candidate Elizabeth Warren joined Senator Tammy Baldwin rallying voters in Milwaukee and Madison. Baldwin's challenger, Republican Leah Vukmir, was also campaigning around the state. Vukmir once again brought up health care at an event in Dodgeville, and specifically the back-and-forth coverage for pre-existing conditions. Early voting locations in Milwaukee will wrap things up this weekend for people looking for a head start to Election Day. We caught up with people yesterday, made their way to the polling sites. In Milwaukee, early voting numbers have surpassed 26,000. That number is up from 2014 when it was 15,000 residents voted early. At Mitchell Street Library, workers cheered and celebrated as new voters cast their ballots. 19-year-old Roberto Muniz says he feels proud to vote. It felt nice because, like, I'm actually contributing to, like, society and stuff like that. In-person early voting is available in some parts of the state, though tomorrow, but those voters must have been registered in order to do so. Find your polling place and see what's on your ballot before you head to the polls at tmj4.com slash the vote. Open. Yesterday, city leaders cut through a ribbon of literal hop, welcoming Milwaukee's new streetcar system to the downtown area. Dozens of people piled on board for the first trip of the year, and the first trip of the year is entirely free. Streetcars used to be a way of life in Milwaukee. In fact, at one time, they were the way to get around. It all started in 1860. The first streetcars were horses drawn from the eight, they rolled down Grand Avenue, which is now Wisconsin Avenue. Streetcars converted to electricity in 1890, and by the 1940s, streetcars were rolling past downtown movie theaters. The last streetcar ran in March 1958. Trackless operations were discontinued. In 1960, in favor of diesel buses, which were cheaper. There will be a party hop going on all weekend long. To see a photo gallery of opening day, a list of weekend events, and the map of the route, look for this story on the homepage of TMJ4.com. A delayed downtown development is now moving forward. The culture which will go in the empty space across the streets from Discovery World has now federal financing. Mayor Tom Barrett says the hop is just part of the renaissance the downtown is experiencing right now. The Pfizer Forum also recently opened and its entertainment district will soon follow. The Milwaukee Business Journal says it's the highest level of investment they have seen in the downtown recent memory. And the new culture will serve more than just those in its building and will also have a two-story grocery store. There's going to be public rooftop spaces, sort of green spaces, but also there will be a transit station on its first level that will have stops for both the streetcar and the bus rapid transit system that Milwaukee County plans to build. No word yet on when the coacher is going to open. The hop is expected to expand to the lakefront by 2020. Coming up on Live at Daybreak, a gunman opens fire inside a yoga studio. Now police are searching for a motive. It's high school football post-seasons and the teams are heating up. Lance Allen with your Friday football frenzy. 
Good morning everyone for Daybreak Sports. I'm Lance Allen. It's round three of the Friday football frenzy, the playoff edition. Geographical rivals always make it fun. Delaney Bry has Franklin at Muskego. Bry's big game returned just in time for 40 degree weather and the battle of the undefeated Muskego versus Franklin. Let's see which squad gets closer to Camp Randall. Muskego with the home turf advantage foaming at the mouth to start this one right out of the gate. The Warriors up three thanks to the leg of Lucas Amaya. Franklin's drive until Sam Chauvinac intercepts this pass and gives the ball right back to his QB. And let me tell you, A.J. Mackinnon lets it fly. Alex Current magnets for hands, I'm telling you. Muskego goes up 10-zip with five minutes left in the first quarter. It was 10-3 at the half, and in the third quarter, the Warriors come out hot. Mackinnon with the QB keeper to make it 17-3, and the Warriors keep on rolling. Final score, 20-3. They remain undefeated and have Marquette next. This group of kids is phenomenal as far as attitude. They give their best effort all the time. They're super coachable. It is an absolute pleasure to coach these guys. I'm having the time of my life. It is an absolute joy. These kids are special people. Um, our coaching staff is off the chart. I think you guys got Marquette next. How do you prepare? Uh, nothing changes. You know, it's cliche, but we focus on ourselves first. We focus on getting better at what we do. We'll watch the film and we'll correct the mistakes we made. And um, these kids are just so coachable and have such positive attitudes. It's, it's a pleasure to work with them. So I, I can't wait to get back with them on Monday. Delaney Bry, today's TMJ4. Thank you, Delaney. They were fired up in Lamira's Amherst and Final Act St. Mary Springs battled the defensive struggle. St. Mary Springs getting on the board first. Short touchdown keeper by quarterback Mitchell Wachter. Amherst hoping to get back into the game on the punt return, but they can't handle the punt. St. Mary Springs recovers, hangs on to win in a shutout 12 zip. Homestead hosting Slinger. Slinger getting on the board when Daniel Brewer hits Hayden Wagner down the right sideline for the 39 yard touchdown. But this was pretty much all Homestead tonight. The Highlanders defense just too tough as they win 42 to 12. And yes, afterward they were dancing in the stands. Gotta love that. Final stop. Racine Lutheran at Cambridge. Lutheran has a potent offense. Watch number five, Tyler Tenner. 25 yards out. Lutheran's moving on to the state semifinals, beating Cambridge 41 21. And Racine Horlick is the reigning frenzy team of the week. Join us Thursday at 6 20, where Delaney hands out the trophy to the next deserving squad. For Daybreak Sports, I'm Lance Allen. Time now for call for action. This is the time of the year when a lot of mediocre and social security scams are being reported. Karen Stiles of our call for action office has more information. Any of us can fall for a scam at any time, but this is the time of year when those receiving Medicare and social security benefits are especially vulnerable. This is open enrollment season for Medicare and scammers know that seniors and others will be focused on many things related to Medicare and Social Security. Some of the scams may include a fast talking, aggressive or sweet sounding person posing as someone from Medicare, Social Security, an insurance company or medical facility asking for a new Medicare or Social Security number, bank information or other personal information. They may try to carry out their scheme by threatening legal action, loss of benefits, or offering freebies and money. If you get a call like this, watch out. Do not provide any personal information and hang up. If you are not sure if the call was legitimate, contact the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, Social Security, your insurer, or medical facility at a number that you know is legitimate to ask questions. Keep in mind, Social Security and Medicare will never call asking for your personal information. If you continue to receive these calls or fall victim to one of these scams, file a complaint with the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, Social Security, or call our Call for Action office to get help. I'm Karen Stiles with Call for Action. Now back to you. Time now for Call for Action. This is a time of year when a lot of Medicare and Social Security scams are being reported. Karen Stiles of our Call for Action office has more information. Any of us can fall for a scam at any time, but this is the time of year when those receiving Medicare and Social Security benefits are especially vulnerable. This is open enrollment season for Medicare and scammers know that seniors and others will be focused on many things related to Medicare and Social Security. 
Some of the scams may include a fast-talking, aggressive, or sweet-sounding person posing as someone from Medicare, Social Security, an insurance company, or medical facility asking for a new Medicare or Social Security number, bank information, or other personal information. They may try to carry out their scheme by threatening legal action, loss of benefits, or offering freebies and money. If you get a call like this, watch out. Do not provide any personal information and hang up. If you are not sure if the call was legitimate, contact the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, Social Security, your insurer, or medical facility at a number that you know is legitimate to ask questions. Keep in mind, Social Security and Medicare will never call asking for your personal information. If you continue to receive these calls or fall victim to one of these scams, file a complaint with the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, Social Security, or call our Call for Action office to get help. I'm Karen Stiles with Call for Action. Now back to you. Coming up, getting ready for the Sunday Night Football, what the Green Bay Packers are looking ahead to before the big game against the Patriots. And then, getting a slice of history, an undefeated MMA champion finally ending up in the UFC. Daybreak Sports, I'm Lance Allen. Of course, Football Night in America starts at 6 our time. Kickoff is set for tomorrow, 7.20 tomorrow night. You can watch the game right here on today's TMJ4, your official Packers station. Coming up on Live at Daybreak, honoring a fallen hero, the Wisconsin Badgers playing a tribute to a Sun Prairie family, and then a different way to vote. The state's using mail-in votes to exchange voter turnout. is today's TMJ4, live at daybreak. Good morning, I'm Callie Lederman. We'll have a check. We'll have a check of your forecast in just a moment. But first, your top stories. Two people are dead and seven others injured following a shoot at a yoga studio. It happened last night at a facility in Tallahassee. When P police arrived, they found multiple people shot at the scene. Police say the suspect is dead and they continue to investigate. Election day is just three days away. This weekend is the last time some people in Milwaukee County can get last minute early voting done. Head to tmj4.com slash the vote to find out when early voting ends for your city and other important voting information. The hop is officially open. Yesterday, city leaders cut through a ribbon of literal hop, welcoming Milwaukee's new streetcar system to the downtown area. Dozens of people piled on board for the first trip. The first year is entirely free to ride. Taking a live look outside now. Pretty gloomy, sunny, got some rain coming. New this morning, a pastor and poser. A woman told Jackson police she got a call New this morning, a woman told Jackson police she got a call from a man posing as a pastor from a Milwaukee church asking her for help. He wanted her to buy iTunes gift cards and send a picture of the security codes. Police say if anyone asks for gift cards or money transfers over the phone, it's probably a scam. The parents of Matthew Shepard Talk to today's TMJ4 about Milwaukee's group mission to fight hate. Two men are serving sentences for brutally murdering their gay son in Miami. They're in Milwaukee to show their support behind a nonprofit called Courage Milwaukee. A Milwaukee couple founder of the organization, they're creating a shelter on the city's south side for the LGBT homeless youth. Oh, I think he'd be very, I think he'd be very happy. I'm proud of the two men who are taking it on in Milwaukee. And Proud of everybody who devoted their lives to this movement. All Matt ever wanted was for people to be nice to each other, to be kind and understanding and respectful. Courage Milwaukee says its group shelter is expected to open in February. And happening today, to show support for the LGBT rights, the city of Milwaukee will be painting rainbow crosswalks near Cathedral Square. The colors of the rainbow symbolize LGBT pride. Mayor Tom Bear will also be in attendance to support the cause. Also today, the Wisconsin Badgers will recognize the family of Captain Corey Barr during the home football game. Corey Barr was a volunteer firefighter killed in the Sun Prairie explosion last July. 
After a contractor struck a gas line, the Wisconsin Athletics hosted the Barr family for a special visit and dedicated a Wisconsin football jersey with his name in his remembrance. Now to the vote, Wisconsin's future Governor Scott Walker making the rounds on the campaign trail ahead of the midterm elections. Walker will be joined by Paul Ryan and Brian Steele in Kenosha today. They're holding a rally at the Mars Cheese Castle around 5. And Walker's challenger, Tony Evers, will also be out on campaign trail. He will be making stops in Waukesha, Fond du Lac, and Green Bay, where incumbent Senator Tammy Baldwin will join him. In the race to turn more voters, a few strats are offering a different way to cast their ballots. By mail, Cynthia McFadden reports. It's an issue that cuts across party lines. Don't boo. Vote. Getting out the vote. Everyone needs to show up and vote. The folks in Oregon think they have figured it out. You have some pretty nasty things to say about the polling place. I think the polling place has become the single biggest voter suppression device in American politics. Phil Kiesling used to be the Democratic Secretary of State here. Dennis Richardson, a Republican, has the job now. And while much of the country is divided down party lines, these two are in total agreement when it comes to the state's vote-by-mail system. It's well embraced. They say their system gets more people voting and is also cheaper and more secure. You can't hack, hack paper. Thank you, sir. 20 years ago, Oregon was the first state to adopt an entirely vote-by-mail system. That's your ballots for you. Every single registered voter in the state, more than 2.5 million, receives a ballot via the U.S. Postal Service. No need to worry about work schedules, child care, or weather, or a voter ID card. 32 states now require one. The majority of ballots come in from hundreds of secure drop sites, though you can mail it back as well. As for security, each signature is verified against voter registration cards. Voters can ask for a text confirming their ballot was counted. What is your message to the states who are thinking about massive expenditures for new voting machines to try to tighten down the cybersecurity of a, a very leaky system in some cases? Save your tens, even hundreds of millions of dollars. Don't replace your aging machines. Throw them on the scrap pile. Go back to paper ballots. Then think hard about abolishing the polling place and moving to a system that puts the voter first and that is going to, in every election, get far more people casting ballots. Cynthia McFadden, NBC News, Portland, Oregon. Find your polling place and see what's on your ballot before you head to the polls at tmj4.com slash the vote. It is now on this Saturday morning. Much more still to come on Live at Daybreak. Get out and enjoy the cooler weather. When to get in on a free day at the zoo. Plus next, warming the hearts one step at a time. How the Salvation Army plans to keep things nice and toasty for kids this winter. Happening today, get out and enjoy the zoo before winter comes. Today, they're offering a family free day. The zoo does this a few times a year and it won't be charged admission, but parking fees still apply. It's all happening from 9.30 to 4.30. As temperatures get colder, the Salvation Army is helping to warm things up for kids. They're giving away free coats to kids this weekend. If your child is in need of a coat, just head to the distribution center on your screen from 9 to 3 all weekend long. Children must be residents of Milwaukee County. Coming up on Live at Daybreak, a look at the rival high school football games. Lance Allen has your Friday football frenzy. And then a world record sandwich. Why today is a perfect day for all of these carbs. It's week three of high school football playoffs. Here's Lance Allen with your Friday football frenzy. Good morning everyone for Daybreak Sports. I'm Lance Allen. The Friday football frenzy rolls on. It's the third week of the playoffs. Conference rivals and great matchups up and down the board. It's one seed Marquette hosting the reigning team of the week. Racine Horlick, the Hilltoppers, Leo Briscoe hitting Reed Thompson three times in the first half. 
for touchdowns. The Rebels try a little razzle-dazzle to jumpstart their offense, but Shane O'Brien will have none of it. Marquette wins 34-13. To, to the air, Greendale Martin Luther against Racine St. Catharines. This one started off wild. Martin Luther down six zip when quarterback Mick Mueller back to pass hits his wide receiver Jacob Hartlob. After the bobble, he pulls it in. Martin Luther up 7-6. Ensuing kickoff for Seen St. Katz trying a little trickery. And this trick turned into a big treat. The reverse to Deshaun Brown. And folks, he won't be touched. 90 yards. Easy touchdown. What a play. St. Catharines wins a wild one. 48-35. New Berlin Eisenhower hosting Greendale. Ike already up 14-3. Looking for more. Running back Jack Himmelspach. Taking this one two yards for the easy touchdown. Extra point puts the Lions up 21-3. Greendale trying to get back in it, but the quarterback picked off by number 87, Ben Buschel. He then has a nice return following the pick. Lions win 31-6. Lake Country Lutheran hosting Horicon Hustisford. Running back Dane Vance cuts to his left, slips a tackle, and is off to the races. He will be tackled just short of the goal line. Very nice run there. Two plays later, it's Vance again. This time he gets over the end line for six. Lake Country Lutheran wins 47-15. Waukesha Catholic Memorial hosting Mount Hora Barneveld at Carroll University. And with 13 seconds left in the half, quarterback Luke Fox hitting Joe Sikma for the touchdown. Yeah, On the defensive end, Ethan Post completing the pass. His receiver lambasted by linebacker Obacasco Allen. No relation to me. Memorial in a shutout, 38 zip. Another high scoring game in Brookfield between Central and Waukesha West. Lancers leading 35-21 in the third quarter when on the option, quarterback Drew Lashinsky pitching to Rashad Lampkin and check out the junior breaking a tackle. Another effort, what a great time for Lampkin. Gets to the 13, Lampkin would score the next play, his fourth touchdown of the game. He had five total. Brooks Blunt back to pass, finds his man Trey Tetzloff for six. Lancers win though 52-28. And Racine Horlick is the reigning frenzy team of the week. Join us Thursday at 620 where Delaney Bry hands out the trophy to the next deserving squad. For Daybreak Sports, I'm Lance Allen. Trending today, it's National Sandwich Day. A few chains are offering some deals for the day. Firehouse Subs is giving away a free medium sandwich to customers who buy a sub, chips, and a drink. Quiznos customers can get a sub for five bucks with a coupon in the chain's app. And just in time for Sandwich Day, the city of New Orleans has broken a new world record for longest poi boy sandwich. The sandwich sat at 500 feet long, breaking the previous record at 340 feet. This all comes as the city celebrates its 300th anniversary. Milwaukee Bucks superstar Giannis Antetokounmpo is moving to River Hills. He paid $1.8 million for this mansion. There are five bedrooms, seven and a half bathrooms, and an in-ground pool, home theater, game room, and wine cellar. Chances for hit or miss showers will continue as we head into the end of the week. Tonight, mostly cloudy skies with lows in the upper 50s and lower 60s. On Thursday, we'll get a chance for some scattered showers, mainly in the afternoon. Otherwise, except partly cloudy skies with highs in the low 70s. Some isolated showers. This weekend, we are starting out this Saturday morning quiet and dry with temperatures in the 30s. By this afternoon, our mixture of sunshine and clouds will give way to mostly cloudy skies and some showers from the west to east. Expect highs in the near 50s. Later this evening through tonight with lows in the upper 30s and low 40s. Showers will continue into Sunday along with gusty winds up to 40 miles per hour. High temperatures will top out in the low to mid 50s. We'll get a brief break from the rain showers on Monday with mostly cloudy skies and highs in the lower 50s. Another round of wind and rain will head our way on Tuesday with a high near 52. After the passage of this system, it'll be colder, highs in the 30s, lower 40s. We're continuing to monitor the chance for a mix of rain and snow for next Friday. Otherwise, it looks mostly cloudy and with cold high lows 30s now. A good weekend to head out to the movie theaters. And a new film will get you ready for rock and roll. Raphael Seth has a look in the box office preview. I didn't know there was fancy dress for it. 
You look like an angry lizard. Rami Malik is under pressure in Bohemian Rhapsody. The Mr. Robot star steps into the spandex bravado of Freddie Mercury, the mercurial frontman of seminal rock band Queen. This film follows the group's rise to superstardom and all the sour notes that fame creates. Bohemian Rhapsody is rated PG-13. Your gift this year will be something you'll never forget. Sometimes it's more than just the thought that counts in The Nutcracker and The Four Realms. This take on the classic holiday ballet star's interstellar cast member Mackenzie Foy, she's given a gift from godfather Morgan Freeman that leads to a parallel universe, and she has to survive the journey through four distinct lands to restore harmony. The Nutcracker is rated PG. What did you get that eye patch? A treasure island. Rosamund Pike has an eye for trouble in A Private War. She plays foreign correspondent Marie Colvin in this battlefield biography. She's an American journalist traveling to the front lines of conflicts all around the world until an assignment in Syria makes her the headline. A Private War is rated R. They don't smell like roaches in here or nothing. Tika Sumter is her sister's keeper in Nobody's Fool. She's the responsible sibling to Tiffany Haddish's ex-con wild child, but when Haddish finds out her sister is being catfished by an online boyfriend, they hatch a plan to get mad, get even, and get away with it. Nobody's Fool is rated R. That's the box office preview. Raphael Seth, NBC News. Still ahead on Live at Daybreak, could you imagine traveling to a city and sleeping in a room with more than a dozen other people? That's a dream by entrepreneurs in Rivervest. They hope to build a hotel inside this former Head Start building. Why they think this would be a good idea. Some entrepreneurs want visitors to experience Milwaukee in an entirely new way. You may think of backpacking to Europe when you hear the word hostel, but now creators want to attract thrifty travelers to come to Milwaukee. Visit Milwaukee shows the dollar power of 23 million people visiting Bruce City each year. It sustains more than 51,000 full-time jobs. That could fill Pfizer Forum three times and has a $5.4 billion impact on the Milwaukee area each year. A new venture to create the city's first hostel will have you sleep with strangers in the same room for under 20 bucks a night. Visit Milwaukee sees this as an opportunity to revitalize the River West area near Holton and Locust. It certainly fills a niche that we don't necessarily have right now, and it will bring new visitors to the city. The Facebook page called Cream City Hostel posted they are still seeking investors from $1,000 to $10,000 in the building. What type of visitor do you think that this would attract? You know, this could attract visitors from any walk of life, somebody who is looking to have an authentic experience here in Milwaukee, someone who is looking to save a little bit of money. They have a long way to go, as the building was last used by Head Start. These pictures posted their page was captioned, Future Hostel Rooms. We have a lot ahead on Live at Daybreak, including the new downtown development of the Milwaukee streetcar and what it could bring to the city. Good morning, I'm Callie Lederman. We'll have a check of your forecast in just a few moments, but first, your top stories. Two people are dead and seven other injured following a shooting at a yoga studio. It happened last night at a facility in Tallahassee. When police arrived, they found multiple people shot at the scene. Police say the suspect is dead and they continue to investigate. Election day is just three days away. This weekend is the last time some people in Milwaukee County can get their last minute early voting done. Head to tmj4.com slash vote to find out when early voting ends for your city and other info important information. The hop is officially open. Yesterday's city leaders cut through a ribbon of literal hop, welcoming Milwaukee's new streetcar system to the downtown area. Dozens of people piled on board for the first trip. The first year is free. Taking a live look outside now, gloomy skies, pretty rainy, not much going on. New this morning, a pastor imposter. A woman told Jackson police she got a New this morning, a pastor imposter. A woman told Jackson police she got a call from a man posing as a pastor from Milwaukee Church asking for her help. He wanted to buy her an iTunes gift card and wanted her to send the security codes. Police say if anyone asks for gift cards or money, do not do it. It's probably a scam. 
The parents of Matthew Shepard talked today about, team, about a group's mission to fight hate. Two men are serving life sentences for brutally murdering their openly gay son 20 years ago in Wyoming. They're in Milwaukee to show their support behind a nonprofit called Courage Milwaukee. A Milwaukee couple founder the organization. They're creating a shelter on the city's south side for the LGBT homeless youth. Oh, I think he'd be very. I think he'd be very happy and proud of the two men who are taking it on in Milwaukee and proud of everybody who devoted their lives to this movement. All Matt ever wanted was for people to be nice to each other, to be kind and understanding and respectful. Courage Milwaukee says its group shelter is expected to open in February. And happening today, to show support for the LGBT rights, the city of Milwaukee will be painting rainbow crosswalks near Cathedral Square. The colors of the rainbow symbolize LGBT pride. Mayor Tom Barrett will also be in attendance to support the cause. Also today, the Wisconsin Badgers will recognize the family of Captain Corey Barr during the home football game. Barr was a volunteer firefighter killed in the explosion last fall. Wisconsin Athletics hosted the Barr family for a special visit and dedicated a Wisconsin football jersey with his name and badge number in his honor. Now to the vote, Wisconsin's future, Governor Scott Walker making the rounds on the campaign. Walker will be joined by Paul Ryan and Brian Steele in Kenosha today. They're holding a rally at the Marsh Cheese Castle around 5. And Walker's challenger, Tony Evers, will also be out in the cut campaign trail. He will be making stops in Waukesha, Fond du Lac, and Green Bay this morning, where incumbent Senator Tammy Baldwin will join him. In the race to help turn out more voters, a few states are offering a different way to cast their ballots, by mail. Cynthia McFadden reports. It's an issue that cuts across party lines. Don't boo. Vote. Getting out the vote. Everyone needs to show up and vote. The folks in Oregon think they have figured it out. You have some pretty nasty things to say about the polling place. I think the polling place has become the single biggest voter suppression device in American politics. Phil Kiesling used to be the Democratic Secretary of State here. Dennis Richardson, a Republican, has the job now. And while much of the country is divided down party lines, these two are in total agreement when it comes to the state's vote-by-mail system. It's well embraced. They say their system gets more people voting and is also cheaper and more secure. You can't hack, hack paper. Thank you, sir. 20 years ago, Oregon was the first state to adopt an entirely vote-by-mail system. That's your ballots for you. Every single registered voter in the state, more than 2.5 million, receives a ballot via the U.S. Postal Service. No need to worry about work schedules, child care, or weather, or a voter ID card. 32 states now require one. The majority of ballots come in from hundreds of secure drop sites, though you can mail it back as well. As for security, each signature is verified against voter registration cards. Voters can ask for a text confirming their ballot was counted. What is your message to the states who are thinking about massive expenditures for new voting machines to try to tighten down the cybersecurity of a, a very leaky system in some cases? Save your tens, even hundreds of millions of dollars. Don't replace your aging machines. Throw them on the scrap pile. Go back to paper ballots. Then think hard about abolishing the polling place and moving to a system that puts the voter first and that is going to, in every election, get far more people casting ballots. Cynthia McFadden, NBC News, Portland, Oregon. Find your polling place and see what's on your ballot before you head to the polls at tmj4.com slash the vote. It is now on this Saturday morning. Much more still to come on Live at Daybreak. Get out and enjoy the cooler weather and when to get a free day at the zoo. Plus next, warming hearts one step at a time. How the Salvation Army plans to keep things nice and toasty for kids this winter. Happening today, get out and enjoy the zoo before winter sets in. Today, they're offering a free family day. The zoo does this a few times a year where you won't be charged for admission, but parking fees will still apply. It's all happening from 9.30 to 4.30. 
As temperatures get colder, the Salvation Army is helping to get warm things up for kids. They're giving away free coats to the kids this weekend. If your child is in need of a coat, just head to the distribution center on your screen from 9 to 3 all weekend long. Children must be residents of Milwaukee County. Coming up at Live at Daybreak, a look at the high school rival football games. Lance Allen has your Friday night football frenzy. And then, a world record sandwich. Why today is a perfect day for all these carbs. It's week three of high school football playoffs. Here's Lance Allen with your Friday football frenzy. Good morning everyone for Daybreak Sports. I'm Lance Allen. The Friday football frenzy rolls on. It's the third week of the playoffs. Conference rivals and great matchups up and down the board. It's one seed Marquette hosting the reigning team of the week. Racine Horlick, the Hilltoppers, Leo Briscoe hitting Reed Thompson three times in the first half for touchdowns. The Rebels try a little razzle dazzle to jumpstart their offense, but Shane O'Brien will have none of it. Marquette wins 34 to 13 to the air. Greendale Martin Luther against Racine St. Catharines. This one started off wild. Martin Luther down six zip when quarterback Mick Mueller back to pass hits his wide receiver Jacob Hartlum. After the bobble, he pulls it in. Martin Luther up 7-6. Ensuing kickoff, Racine St. Katz trying a little trickery, and this trick turned into a big treat. The reverse to Deshaun Brown, and folks, he won't be touched. 90 yards, easy touchdown, what a play. St. Catharines wins a wild one, 48-35. New Berlin Eisenhower hosting Greendale. Ike already up 14-3, looking for more. Running back Jack Himmelspach. Taking this one two yards for the easy touchdown. Extra point puts the Lions up 21-3. Greendale trying to get back in it, but the quarterback picked off by number 87, Ben Buschel. He then has a nice return following the pick. Lions win 31-6. Lake Country Lutheran hosting Horicon Hustisford. Running back Dane Vance cuts to his left, slips a tackle, and is off to the races. He will be tackled just short of the goal line. Very nice run there. Two plays later, it's Vance again. This time he gets over the end line for six. Lake Country Lutheran wins 47-15. Waukesha Catholic Memorial hosting Mount Hora Barneveld at Carroll University. And with 13 seconds left in the half, quarterback Luke Fox hitting Joe Sikma for the touchdown. Yeah, On the defensive end, Ethan Post completing the pass. His receiver lambasted by linebacker Obacasco Allen. No relation to me. Memorial in a shutout, 38 zip. Another high scoring game in Brookfield between Central and Waukesha West. Lancers leading 35-21 in the third quarter when on the option, quarterback Drew Lashinsky pitching to Rashad Lampkin and check out the junior breaking a tackle. Another effort. What a great time for Lampkin. Gets to the 13. Lampkin would score in the next play his fourth touchdown of the game. He had five total. Brooks Blunt back to pass. Finds his man Trey Tetzloff for six. Lancers win though 52-28. And Racine Horlick is the reigning frenzy team of the week. Join us Thursday at 6:20, where Delaney Bry hands out the trophy to the next deserving squad. For Daybreak Sports, I'm Lance Allen. Trending today, it's National Sandwich Day. A few chains are offering some deals for the day. Firehouse Subs is giving away a free medium sandwich today to customers who buy a sub, chips, and a drink. Quiznos customers can get a five-inch sub with their coupon in the chain's app. And just in time for Sandwich Day, the City of New Orleans has broken the world record for the longest pull boy sandwich. The sandwich sat at 500 feet long, breaking the previous record at 340 feet. This all comes as the city celebrates its 300th anniversary. Milwaukee Bucks superstar Giannis Antetokounmpo is moving to River Hills. He paid $1.8 million for this mansion. There are five bedrooms, seven and a half bathrooms, an in-ground pool, home theater, game room, and a wine cellar. Chances for hit or miss showers will continue as we head into the end of the week. Tonight, expect mostly cloudy skies with lows in the upper 50s and low 60s. On Thursday, we'll get a chance for some scattered showers, mainly in the afternoon. Otherwise, expect partly cloudy skies with highs in the lower 70s. Friday will be mostly cloudy with a slight chance for some weekend. Sunshine will return for Monday with highs in the upper 70s. On Tuesday there will be a slight chance for isolated showers, otherwise partly cloudy with a high of 80. Widespread showers and thunderstorms will return for Wednesday with highs in the lower 80s. 
We are starting out this Saturday morning quiet and dry with temperatures in the 30s. By this afternoon, our mixture of sunshine and clouds will give way to mostly cloudy skies and some showers from the west to east. Expect highs in the near 50. Widespread showers are expected later this evening through tonight with lows in the 30s and lower 40s. Showers will continue into Sunday along with gusty winds up to 40 miles an hour. High temperatures will top out in the mid to low 50s. We'll get a brief break from the rain showers. Another round of wind and rain will head our way on Tuesday with a high near 52. After the passage of the system, it will be cooler with highs of the 30s and low 40s. We're continuing to monitor for ch the chance of rain and snow next Friday. Otherwise, it looks mostly cloudy with cloud in the highs in the low 30s. A good weekend to head out to the movie theaters. A new film will get you ready for rock and roll. Raphael Seth has a look in the box office review. I didn't know his fancy dress for it. You look like an angry lizard. Rami Malek is under pressure in Bohemian Rhapsody. The Mr. Robot star steps into the spandex bravado of Freddie Mercury, the mercurial frontman of seminal rock band Queen. This film follows the group's rise to superstardom and all the sour notes that fame creates. Bohemian Rhapsody is rated PG-13. Your gift this year will be something you'll never forget. Sometimes it's more than just the thought that counts in The Nutcracker and The Four Realms. This take on the classic holiday ballet stars interstellar cast member Mackenzie Foy, she's given a gift from Godfather Morgan Freeman that leads to a parallel universe, and she has to survive the journey through four distinct lands to restore harmony. The Nutcracker is rated PG. What did you get that eye patch? At Treasure Island. Rosamund Pike has an eye for trouble in A Private War. She plays foreign correspondent Marie Colvin in this battlefield biography. She's an American journalist traveling to the front lines of conflicts all around the world until an assignment in Syria makes her the headline. A Private War is rated R. They don't smell like roaches in here or nothing. Tika Sumter is her sister's keeper in Nobody's Fool. She's the responsible sibling to Tiffany Haddish's ex-con wild child, but when Haddish finds out her sister is being catfished by an online boyfriend, they hatch a plan to get mad, get even, and get away with it. Nobody's Fool is rated R. That's the box office preview. Raphael Seth, NBC News. Still, a hive on still ahead on Live at Daybreak, could you imagine traveling to a city and sleeping in a room with more than a dozen other people? That's a dream by entrepreneurs in River Rest. They hope to build a hostel inside this former hedge building. Why they think it would be a good idea.